Good morning, my brethren. We just want to bless his name this morning. Just go ahead and honor our father who is in heaven. Honor our Lord Jesus. Honor the Holy Spirit in our midst. Father in heaven, without you, we are nothing. Lord Jesus, without you, we are nothing. Lord Holy Spirit, without your leadership, we are nothing. Lord, we are nothing without your presence. And so this morning, we come once again to the throne of grace and mercy to surrender unto you, O God, to surrender to your wisdom, to surrender to your great grace, to surrender to your mercy that endures forever. We come, O God, with nothing of our own, every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights with whom there's no variableness or shadow of turning. Father, there is nothing good that we have that you've not given to us. And so this morning we come in acknowledgement that we are the recipients of your grace. We are the recipients of your mercy. We are the recipients of your loving kindness. We are the recipients of your goodness. We are the recipients of your love. And we come to say thank you. We thank you, the one who sits enthroned forever. We thank you, the great I am that I am. Thank you for the dawning of a new day. Thank you for preserving us. Thank you that this morning we are alive, we are well, we are in the land of the living and we have a God who is above all powers, above all thrones, above all kings, above all principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. We thank you this morning that we have a father in heaven who watches over his word to perform in our lives. We thank you that we have a savior in Christ Jesus who went to the cross on our behalf, who died in our place, carried our sinner died our dead so today we could have newness of life we are grateful this hour we give the praise to you oh god we give the honor to you oh god we give the adoration to you we thank you jesus lord we worship you the first adam failed and he brought rebellion into the world the first adam failed and he gave lucifer the authority over the earth realm but jesus the second adam came and he, he was victorious he was victorious the second adam Adam came and he died in our place and he rose up with life and today we are part of a new race we are part of the royal generation we are a royal generation because the second Adam Jesus has restored humanity back to the place where God had ordained for us thank you Jesus that you second Adam have restored the authority that the devil had stolen from the human race thank you Jesus that today we are standing as new creatures uh, that all things have passed away and behold all things have become new thank you today jesus uh, you've purchased a salvation and a deliverance for us uh, thank you lord uh, in your name we've come this morning in your power we've come uh, in your grace we've come uh, by the authority you've given us we come uh, and we say thank you thank you thank you lord uh, we enter your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise because Lord we acknowledge your word that said enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise so Lord we want to say thank you thank you for all you have done for us thank you for your favor your grace your mercy thank you for your loving kindness thank you almighty God you deserve the glory you deserve the praise you deserve the adoration be exalted be exalted in the congregation of the mighty be exalted in the midst of your children let your great name be magnified be magnified oh god you are highly exalted thank you father bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me bless his name do not forget his benefits the one who has redeemed your life from the peter lord i thank you thank you for redeeming us thank you for healing all our diseases thank you for filling our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like that of an eagle father we say thank you blessings glory honor and adoration be unto you and of days. Glory be to your name. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, let's go to John 14. John 14 from verse 6. The disciple Thomas went to the Lord Jesus and said, Lord, please just tell us plainly when you keep telling us about going somewhere can you just tell us where you're going so we can know the way so we can know where to go please just give us the postcode give us the gps coordinate so we just know how to get there and the lord jesus said in john 14 6 i'm reading the amplified version he said i am the only way to god and the real truth and the real life no one comes to the father but through me remember in john 10 he's already told us i am the door of the sheep 
in John 10, Jesus told us in verse 7, I am the door of the sheep, the door that leads to eternal life. All who came before me as false messiahs and self-appointed leaders are thieves and robbers. But the true sheep don't listen to them. The true sheep don't hear any other voice. They only hear the voice of the Lord. He said, I am the door. Anyone who enters through me will be saved and will live forever and will go in and out freely and find pasture. They will find spiritual security. Uh, so this morning, Jesus says, I am the only way. I am the real truth and I am the real life. And I am showing you once you know me and you go through me, you found the way. So this morning, let's bring ourselves back to our Lord, who is our door and say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for being my door. Thank you, Lord, for being the door of our prayer group. Thank you for being the door for the body of Christ here on earth. Thank you for being the door for those who have not even found you. That Lord, we know by faith they will find you. Our, our relatives, our family members who have not known Jesus, our neighbors, our people in the community who have not found Jesus. Jesus, we know they will find him because Jesus is the only way to God. And so this morning, Lord, I thank you that in you, I have found the way to God, that in you, Jesus, I have access to the heavenly realms. In you, I can access the throne of grace and mercy. In you, Jesus, I can come into the presence of almighty God. The Bible says in Hebrews 12 from verse 22, we have come to Mount Zion. We have come to the city of the living God. Through Jesus, we have come to the innumerable company of angels. Through Jesus, we have come to Father God, the judge of everything. He's the just judge of the universe. Through Jesus, we have come to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven. Through Jesus, we have come. We have come to all the activity that goes on in heaven. Through him, we have access. He is our door. Through the door that is Jesus, we have access to righteousness, to deliverance, to mercy, to trust transformation. Through Jesus, we are here. Hebrews 12, 24 say, Jesus, we have come to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. Jesus is our high priest after the order of Melchizedek. When we come to him, he, he, he intercedes on our behalf with Father God. His blood is sprinkled right now on the mercy seat in heaven, interceding for us and speaking mercy that triumphs over judgment. Through Jesus, we have deliverance. We have change. Through Jesus, we have everything we need. Let's come through the door this morning. Don't just stand at the door. He says, when you come through me, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When we come to Jesus, we get the truth. It doesn't matter what the facts are on planet earth. Truth supersedes the facts. Yes, we get the truth. The truth is that God is for us, is not against us. God is on our side. The truth is that God knows the plans that he has, he has for us. Plans for good and not for evil. To give us a future and to bring us to our expected end. To give us hope for tomorrow. Through Jesus, we have the truth. The truth is that God loves us. The truth is that he's not our enemy. The truth is God is not trying to kill us. God has already saved us. God sent Jesus not to destroy us. He sent Jesus to transform us. And so we get the truth this morning. The truth is we are overcomers. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, our Lord. The truth this morning is good news. And so, Lord, we thank you for being our truth. Jesus, you are our light. Yes, you are our light. And we choose to to follow the path that you left for us because he says I am the way I am the truth and I am the life as we follow you Jesus we find life as we follow you we find the truth as we follow you we are realigned to the center of God's will for our lives we become everything that God has ordained us to be. As we follow you, Lord, we become everything. Father in heaven designed for us by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are our way, the truth, and the life. And this morning, we choose to stay with you, Lord. We choose to stay with you. When we go to John 14, John 14, verse 15, John 14, verse 15, Jesus said, if you really love me, you will keep and obey my commandments. If you really love me, you will keep and obey my commandments. The commandments of Jesus are not grievous to us. The commandments of the Father are not grievous to us. He says the proof of love is obeying him. Let's begin to come in repentance. Are there any times that we have broken his commandment where we've not listened to his voice, where we've not followed the voice of our master and our leader? Lord, we are pleading the blood of Jesus. We are asking for mercy this morning. 
Kalabasia, Regado Socorabasi and Darabokura Basia, Jabrudo Dolo Bradasi Kalabasia, Maka Legado Sukarimasia. Father God, wherever I have not obeyed your commandment, wherever I have not kept the truth of your word, Lord, I am pleading the blood of Jesus. Marakasekelebosia. Anytime I've not kept your commandment, I repent of it right now. And I receive grace to walk in your truth, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father God, for our bloodlines, for our families, our spouses, our children, our children's children, where your commandment is not being obeyed. Father God, we pray for mercy that you would cleanse us, O God, and wash us in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We go to Luke 13, Luke 13, Luke 13 from verse 1. Bible says, just at that time, some people came who told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate the governor had mixed with their sacrifices. Jesus replied to them and said, do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all other Galileans because they have suffered in this way? He says, I tell you no, but unless you repent and change your old way of thinking he doesn't just say change your behavior he says change your old way of thinking because our behavior is influenced by our thinking when we are thinking along the wrong pathways when we have a delusion where we have began to believe that what is bad is good and we began to believe that God tolerates what is not tolerable you know that is what affects us he says unless you repent unless you change your old way of thinking unless you turn from your sinful ways and live changed lives you will all likewise perish. Or do you assume that those 18 on whom, on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed were worse sinners than all the others who live in Jerusalem? He says, I tell you no, but unless you repent, you change your old way of thinking, turn from your sinful ways and live changed lives, you will likewise perish. Brethren, I pray that none of us will perish. Let's begin to pray according to that Luke 13. Jesus is saying, these Galileans who, who Pilate killed, and mixed their blood with their sacrifice. In other words, he was defiling their prayer. And he says those people who had the disaster at Siloam when the, the tower fell on them, he says they are not any worse than us. He says unless, in the Amplified, he says unless you repent and change your old way of thinking, turn from your sinful ways and live changed lives, you will likewise perish. Perishing is not our portion. Let's begin to pray. Lord, help me to change my old way of thinking. Do you know, child of God, there is a way we can and think that leads us into sin because the, the behavior is as a result of a thinking process. Lord, wherever my thinking processes are not in agreement with the truth, because remember, we have read that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. In John 14, verse 6, wherever, Lord, I am thinking, and I'm not thinking in according to your truth, and I'm not following your way, and I'm, I'm not walking according to your pattern, Lord, I am pleading the blood of Jesus. Lord, change my way of thinking. I pray for my spouse. I pray for my sons and daughters. I pray for my brothers and sisters. I pray for my nieces and nephews. I pray for my parents. I pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ. I pray for my prayer partners. Any any thinking pattern that is leading to sin, any old way of thinking, any way I'm thinking like the old Adam, the one who fell, who is in rebellion to God and not thinking like the second Adam who came to give me righteousness, any thinking pattern, any thinking process that is not of God. Father, I pray for mercy by the blood of Jesus. I pray for mercy by the blood of Jesus. Any thinking that is closing the door to eternal life, any thinking that is closing the door to righteousness. Lord, I pray, change my way of thinking in the mighty name of Jesus. Change my way of thinking, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Brethren, I want us to pray about our thinking patterns. Yesterday, the Lord was reminding me that in the book of Romans, he said some people have been given over to delusions. It means that what they believe is not the reality, is not the truth. But you know, some people, the way we were brought up, some people are holding on to it. They are Christians. They are ministers of the gospel. Some people are even ordained, but they are living like unbelievers. I know somebody who used to boast and say, me, I'm a Lagosian. I was brought up in Lagos. 
And they're boasting about being a Lagosian, boasting about how they were brought up to fight for nothing, to fight, to be argumentative, to, to fight people. And they think that it's a blessing, but it's not because it's working against their Christianity and giving Satan legal ground to steal, to kill and to destroy. There are some ways we are thinking that are stopping us from living in righteousness. There are ways you think about things that are not the ways of God. Let us pray. Lord, every mindset that is not of you. Second Corinthians 10 from verse 3 said, Though we walk in the flesh, we don't fight according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. For the pulling down of strongholds, any stronghold of wrong thinking, wrong imagination, thinking the wrong thing. Lord, we cast them down. It says casting down every vain imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God, bringing every thought to obedience to Lord Jesus Christ. If Jesus is the way and the truth and the life, I want my thoughts to be following the way, the truth and the life. In the name of Jesus, Jesus said, unless you repent and change your old way of thinking, turn from your sinful lives and live changed lives, you will likewise perish. God have mercy on us this morning. According to Luke 13 verse 5, Lord, we don't want to perish. And so we are asking this morning, change, oh God, every stronghold of wrong thinking patterns that leads to sinful behavior. Let them be pulled down in our lives, in our spouses, in our children, in our children's children, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Yesterday, I was having a conversation at home, you know, with my husband about a certain uh, preacher in Nigeria. A lot of people know him. He's very popular. You know, recently, in recent years, some of what he, he, he teaches, and he says he has a revelation that all the pastors in Nigeria are lost, and he now knows the truth. And when he preaches, when you listen to him, you know, 90% truth that is mixed with 10% poison is still poison. So I was saying to my husband, there is a spirit working behind him that makes him think he has revelation because some people will listen to him and fall for it hook, line and sinker. And I was saying, I don't listen to such people because his poison is coming from a, 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 a wrong mindset and demons are working on it and wanting it to carry on because Satan is a good liar. He doesn't just lie like, you know, a lie that is obvious. No, he will change the truth a little bit so that the truth almost, sorry, the lie looks like a truth and you cannot even see where he's lying. And I was saying that pastor, in my, my view, the way that Satan has managed to work with him is to give him the delusion that he's the only prophet left in the land, that everybody else is confused and he alone knows the truth. And that's a delusion and it's leading him the wrong way. I want you to pray for yourself. Is there an area in your life where you have a delusion, you know, where you become self-righteous, you think this is the right way and refuse to change. When people are pointing it out, you will argue until the cows come home. Let us pray this morning. Father, I cast down every vain imagination, any delusion in my mind, any wrong believing, anything I'm believing and holding on to, refusing to change it. And Satan is using it as a legal ground to cause confusion, to steal, to kill and destroy. Father God, I cast it down. I pray for my spouse. I pray for my children. I pray for my children's children. Any lie of the devil that they have believed, Lord, expose the lies. Expose the lie. Let the lie be exposed in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Expose every lie, mighty God. Expose every lie. Every lie that is giving Satan legal ground over our families and over the church of God. Lord, expose it. We cast it down. We bring every thought into submission to the Lord Jesus. Because John 14, 6 says, Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. I have to walk in truth. And the belt of truth is part of the full armor of God. Without the truth, Satan has a doorway. The belt of truth is part of our full armor. If we lose the truth, it means all the other weapons fall down. Mighty God, we receive the truth today. We walk in the truth. We live by the truth. We think according to the truth. Our imaginations are based on the truth. We will not twist the word of God in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Father. And oh God, I pray for myself and all my brothers and sisters in Christ. Anybody, anytime anybody is twisting the word, Father God, let our spiritual alarm bells begin to ring. Father God, we pray for our spouses, our children, our children's children. Anytime anyone begins to twist the word of God, alarm bells will go off and we will know that we know that this is a lie from the pit of hell and none of us will be defiled in the name of Jesus. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Still in Luke 13, the Lord Jesus was talking about repentance. And then he began to tell them a parable in verse six. He says, a certain man had a fig tree. And in the, in his teachings, the Lord Jesus always used the fig tree as a symbol for the nation of Israel at that time when he came to save them. Today, you can compare the fig tree to us who are believers who say we've given our lives to Christ. Are you with me? He says, this man had a fig tree that he planted in his vineyard and he came looking for fruit on it, but did not find any fruit. So he said to the vineyard keeper, for three years, I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree and I found none, nothing at all. Three years, he says, cut it down, cut it down. In the King James, he says, why cumbereth it the ground. In other words, it's become cumbersome to the ground. It's become a waste of space. It's just a burden for nothing. In the Amplified, he said, cut it down. Why does it even use up the ground? Depleting the soil, blocking the sunlight, using up nutrients for nothing. It's here, eating up the good of the ground and never brought a result out of it. And the, the, the vineyard keeper said, sir, please, Leave it alone for just one more year until I dig around it and put in fertilizer. And if it bears fruit after this, fine. But if it does not, cut it down. Jesus was saying, for three years I've been here, walking the streets of Israel, teaching the gospel. For three years I've not seen the manifestation of the gospel. These people, they have deafened their ears. They are not listening. Their eyes are blind and they are doing it stubbornly. They have hardened their hearts. For three years I've provided the nutrients of the word of God. I have done miracle signs and wonders. Here they are still unchanged. Three years later, cut it down. They are, they are wasting space. For us today is like this. How long have we been born again? How long have we listened to the word of God? How long have we heard the Holy Spirit speaking to us? How long have we seen the work of God in our lives? Is there a fruit coming out of it? He says, is there a fruit? If there is no fruit, cut it down because it's taking up space. I want us to pray for ourselves, all our brothers and sisters in Christ, our family members and say, Lord, where I've been wasting your word. I am hearing your word every day, but Lord, there's, it looks like there's no fruit out of your word. Where it looks like I'm wasting the choir. The choir sing and sing and sing. After they finish singing, I'm still the same. The, the preachers are preaching, preaching. The Bible study teachers are teaching, teaching, teaching. But there's no impact. Lord have mercy upon me. In the name of Jesus. Wherever we are not showing the fruit of all the word of God inside of us, of all what we've been taught. We are praying not just for ourselves, but you know, our family members, our children, our brothers, our sisters, our parents. How many years have people heard the Bible and still walking in unbelief, in doubt, in all sorts of things? Let us pray that Lord, I don't want to be a waste of space. Neither do I want you to have to cut me down. I am asking Lord, help me by your grace. Let there be fruit in my Christianity. Let my Christianity bring forth fruit in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, you have given me so much. You have watered my ground. You have watered me with your word. You have watered me by your spirit. You have given us gifts of the spirit. You have given us teachers. You've given us apostles. You have given us prayer leaders. You have given us all sorts. Now let there be a fruit from what you are teaching us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. That Lord, we will not remain the same. Ragados Zebra Father, from today, we pray in the name of Jesus, mercy that triumphs over judgment by the blood of Jesus, enable us to bear fruit. None of us will be a barren tree in the name of Jesus, in the things of the spirit. May we bear fruit. We want our lives to show that the word of God is inside of us. Our families need to show that the word of God is inside of us. Now our lives must change. We must walk in a new way. People must find the fruit of the spirit inside of us. They must see the fruit of the spirit. It must be evident that these ones have been with Jesus.
in Antioch, when they saw the believers, they saw that they behaved like Christ and they called them Christians because they behaved like Christ. Lord, in the same manner, wherever we go, we won't need to introduce ourselves. I'm a pastor. I'm a bishop. I'm an evangelist. But people will just see there is something different about this one. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, let the fruit of the spirit be found in our lives. In the name of Jesus, Father, we pray that we will not waste time. We will not waste any time, any teaching you have taught us and we became just hearers of the word and not doers of the word. We repent today. May we be doers of your word. Every word we hear must change us. Every word we hear must change us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In verse 8, when the vineyard dresser was told to cut it down, cut this tree down is depleting the soil and wasting the sunlight, blocking the sunlight for the, uh, the, 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 the grapevines. He, he, he interceded and said, sir, please, one more year. Now for you and I, we don't know how long the grace period is. God can tolerate all sorts, but you know, the grace period can come to an end. We want to pray that Lord, in the time you have given me, to be able to be a true doer of the word. Let me not waste this season of grace. The Bible says we don't know when the trumpet shall sound. We don't know when the Lord is going to come again. We don't know when judgment will come. Child of God, we don't even know when Satan is planning to kill people. Some people, Satan, you know, God held Satan back for a long time. But one day, one day, they are found out in that sin that they've been tolerating for a long time. We want to ask God, Lord, show us your mercy. I remember Remember years ago, there was a wonderful preacher called Zachary Teams. Some of you may have heard of him. He used to be preaching on TBN, very good teacher of the word and all that. Zachary Tim had been a drug user in his younger years. And he said he got clean and all that. He had a mega church in America. Do you know how he died? He died in a hotel room with a woman who's not his wife and having taken a drug overdose. That means your grace period went it went and the enemy was able to come, still kill and destroy. Imagine up to now how his children feel to know that you died in a hotel room from drug overdose. A.A. A. Allen, he was one of God's generals. A.A. A. Allen walked in the days of the voice of healing in America. A.A. A. Allen prayed for people. They will get creative miracles. People who were missing body parts. That doctors had scammed them. He will pray for them. The body part will come back. That was A.A. A. Allen. He moved in the power of God, but he died from alcohol intoxication. Child of God, the grace period, we don't want to waste it. Let us pray. Lord, this one year, I don't know what the one year is for me. Where he said, dig around it, put fertilizer, give it one more year. If it bears fruit, fine. But if not, cut it down. Father Lord, may I not waste my grace period in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. May I not waste my grace period, the grace period you've given for me to change, to walk in your light, to walk in your truth. The grace period you've given my spouse, my children, my children's children. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, we will use it uh, to walk in the light. Makareka sukalaba rigado sokondo roboshaya li bragado sukaleba handa le baba baba zita rarabo shatara bahanda li bradeske debo si anda la bosia. We are pleading the blood uh, and asking for a change, uh, a transformation uh, in our lives uh, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. When you continue forward in that Luke 13, now Jesus has finished talking about the parable. Now he talks about a woman who is a daughter of Abraham, but for 18 years, she has had a demon of infirmity. She had an illness caused by an evil spirit. She was bent double and could not straighten up at all. That is Luke 13 verse 11. Now Jesus is, there's a theme here in Luke 13. It starts off with, listen. When bad things happen to people, don't think that you are better than them. He says, you are not a better sinner than them. And he's not, you know, telling us about repentance. And then he tells us what can happen to a true child of God. This woman was a daughter of Abraham, but for 18 years, Satan found a doorway to resist her. 
and give her a spirit to oppress her. So Jesus was trying to show them you could be a covenant child and because you don't understand something, the enemy got a doorway and for 18 years the enemy resisted this woman who is a covenant child, who has a covenant that provides healing, who has a covenant that means she's supposed to live above this. But because there was an area the enemy could manipulate, he, he manipulated and oppressed her for 18 good years. Yet she was a daughter of Abraham who was supposed to be loosed from this burden. I want you to pray for yourself and say, Lord, even as I've repented this morning, where there are areas in my life, where even as a covenant child of almighty God, where even though I have the covenant of Abraham, I have the covenant of the New Testament sealed by the blood of Jesus, where Satan had found a doorway to oppress me, to resist me, to stop me in one area. Lord, I am pleading the blood of Jesus today and receiving your mercy. Lord, in the name of Jesus, open the eyes of my understanding to see where I'm being oppressed by Satan. Wherever Satan has got an upper hand in my life, whether it's health, whether it's finances, whether it's professional life, whether it's parenthood, whether, Lord, it's relationship, it's maritally, whatever area. This morning, I received deliverance. I received the mercy of God. Any area in my life where Satan is oppressed me and ignoring the covenant that God has with me. I plead the blood of Jesus and I shut that door to that oppression. I rebuke that oppression in the name of Jesus. Jesus spoke to the woman in Luke 13 verse 12. He says, woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. You are released from your illness. And Bible scholars tell us that that word loosed, apolulo, that it means to untie to untie, as in untying the curse, untying the bondage, releasing her from however she had been tied. There's a way Satan can tie people. Remember in uh, 1 John, 1 John 3, 8, part B, the Bible says, for this reason, the son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. And Bible scholars tell us that that word destroy means to undo to undo, to undo what they have done, to undo the do, undo their bindings and their cursing, whatever they are doing in your life. When Jesus comes, he's come to undo. You know, we say there are things that the child of God may, may have been manipulated by the enemy, but God has come to undo. Before we start praying, I want to share my screen with you. Tell me if you can see it. Just give me a moment. Um, because as we are praying to undo, I want you to undo some of the works of the occult in your life. Brethren, can you see my screen? Can you see where it says hexes and curses? Okay, so I'm going to be scrolling my screen down as we pray. And I want you to, as you are undoing, because your own doing might not be like this woman where there was a demon that came and caused infirmity. For some people, yes, there might be. So you're going to cover all bases. But I also want you to cover the, the bases that, you know, the, 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 the rebels who are rebelling against God are doing. Um, I, I will use my Bible reference for this to show you that on earth, there are some things that um, are rebelling against the nature of God. In, in 2 Thessalonians 2, 2 Thessalonians 2, the Bible says... From verse 5, I'm reading Amplified. It says, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I was telling you these things and you know what restrains him now? What is restraining the Antichrist that the Bible has discussed in the preceding verses? You know what restrains him now from being revealed? What is restraining that human being or that being called the Antichrist from being revealed? It is so that he will be revealed at his own appointed time. Verse 7 says, for the mystery of lawlessness. In the King James, when you read it, it says the mystery of iniquity. Iniquity is not just one of sinning. It's a pattern of behavior that has become deeply entrenched in the human DNA. So the mystery of iniquity, the mystery of lawlessness. Amplified says the mystery of rebellion against divine authority. The mystery of rebellion against the reign of God is already at work, but it is restrained only until he who now restrains it is taken out of the way. So 
the Holy Spirit in the church of God is restraining the full power of the Antichrist so that the being called the Antichrist has not manifested yet because the church is here with the fullness of the Holy Ghost. But even though the church is here, the Bible says that mystery of lawlessness is already at work. So it's already working. Why am I telling you this? Witchcraft, sorcery, all the occultic things, things that are done by spiritists. They are part of the order of rebellion against the divine authority of God and the divine order of God. God has a plan for the church. God has a plan for me, for you. But there is a kingdom of darkness that stands in rebellion and says, no, God says you are blessed. And they say, no, 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 no. You must be cursed. God said you must be promoted. They say, no, 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 no. You must be demoted. God says you are healed. They say, no. They must be sick. God says you must live a righteous life. They say, no, 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 no. They must sin and just keep sinning up and down. They must become helpless. Are you with me? That is the mystery of lawlessness. That is what is happening where there are people who are rebelling against divine authority. The authority of God says you are blessed. You are more than a conqueror. And they are opposing and saying no. So as you are praying, child of God, I want you to pray like that woman in Luke 13. You want to be loosed. You want to be be released from anything that has bound you, whether for 18 years, whether for three months, whether for one year, whatever it is. And those things that are binding you could be hexes. They could be curses. I'm going to be going down the screen and I want you to try and pray according to what you're seeing on the screen. So for example, a hex, when a hex is upon a person, torment always follows them. It's a type of magic that is created, you know, through rituals, through spells, incantations, and they use it to torment their enemies or anyone they hate, or if you upset them. The other day, three days ago, I was listening to this woman who is a witch, a practicing witch. Do you know how many of them are on TikTok now? They do it openly and they teach people to hex others. And she said, I can hex anybody, even Christians. She said, there are only a few Christians I've not been able to hex. But she says, even Christians, I hex them. I hex them every day. You just have to wait for the right moment. In other words, when they see a doorway, they drop the hex. But when they've hexed you, they can make your day miserable. They can complicate things in your life. Try and make your life a living hell. So you're there complaining against God, but it's not God. It's because there's a hex upon your life. They can do small things, small, small things that amount to big frustration. From the morning you wake up, you try to start your car. The car is not starting. You try to take the kids to school. Something is happening. You try to do this and the other. They're frustrated. You get to work and people are fighting with you. All sorts. They can do that just to make your life miserable. They will alter things in the physical world through what they've done spiritually. They can hex your clothes. They can hex your car. They can hex your desk. When I get to my desk at work, I don't take it for granted, child of God. When I sit down, I bless my work area. They can hex. There are some things I told my husband. Some of my awards that I've won, I've not taken them to work because I was sharing an office and I don't want anybody to hex my things. When they come and hold it with envy and jealousy, they put in a hex. I said, until I get my own office. Now, when I get my office, I'm going to carry my things and display them. For now, I wasn't because I don't want that. So as you're praying, just do you understand, brethren? Break their hexes. Break their hexes and their curses because Jesus says, woman, man, thou art loosed. I'm undoing. I am undoing the works of the devil in your life. I am undoing what they've spoken. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus because we are children of God and we have a new covenant we refuse to be in bondage any way that the enemy has bound us any way any area of our life where there's been any binding father God for this reason the son of God was made manifest that he might undo destroy the works of the devil today let the works of the devil be undone let the works of the devil be destroyed father any hexes and curses upon any child of God here upon our spouses our our children, our children's children, our parents, our grandparents, any hexes upon my life, I break them by the power in the name of Jesus. By the authority in the name of Jesus, I break the hex. Any kind of magic, any kind of spell, any ritual that has been done, oh God, to bring torment, to bring torment, I break it in Jesus' name. Anything that wants the simple things in our lives to make us miserable, we break it. We break it, Lord. Anything that wants our life to be a living hell, we break it. Any hex 
that says you will work, 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 work. Your colleagues will be lazy and they will they would they will under help we break that hex anything that says uh, in your business people will be lazy we break the hex anything that says uh, we will work over work we break the hex anything that says we must suffer we break the hex anything that is upon any physical thing hexes Upon your car, so that you keep spending money on that car, we break the hex. Anything that wants us to overspend on our cars, we, we break the hex. Anything wants us to overspend in the kitchen, in the house, on plumbing, on what not, Lord, we break every hex. In the name of Jesus. Ragado soko rabasi and rabosi. Ragado sukale bragadosi. Rababa jeke telebosi. Ramasi kalabosi. Father, we break the hexes and the spells. I break them in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare they have no effect over us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Next, we want to pray about curses. We want to pray about curses. Jesus said in, in Galatians 3:13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. In the Amplified, it says, Christ purchased our freedom and redeemed us from the curse of the law and its condemnation by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs crucified on a tree on the cross. Deuteronomy 21, 23. In order that in Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham might also come upon us, the Gentiles, so that we would all receive the realization of the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. So that's our verse. We know that a curse caused less will not land, but sometimes we open the door because we didn't know, or, you know, we accepted something or we got angry. And at that point they dropped it. They dropped the curse. They dropped the hex because all these witches, we have them at work. We have them everywhere. They can trigger you. Come and gossip and tell lies. Then while you're angry and shouting and hollering, they drop what they were trying to drop because they knew they can't drop it on you until you start losing yourself a bit. So however way the curse came, we are using Galatians 3, 13 and 14 to break the curse. So curses, Derek Prince used to describe them like this. He says it's an invisible spiritual force that is sent to hinder you, to block you. To stop you from fulfilling the plan of God for your life. You can't see it, but it's real. When a person is under a curse, doors are shutting. They are going through all sorts. Because the curse is designed to punish you. To make you suffer. To make life difficult. And it will never be broken until certain conditions are met and lifted. And the people who release these curses, God was teaching me three days ago. That now when these people are binding the curse, they have, they've become so clever so that, you know, the curse can keep working even when the person is born again. So we have to know that we have to appropriate the word of God. No jokes about it for these curses to be broken. We have to believe by faith Galatians 3, 13 and 14 and enforce it in our lives. And you see, there are types of curses here. If you can see my screen, the metamorphosis curse. This curse changes the physical appearance of someone into an animal or something scary. When people look at you, they see a monster. So they don't like to help you. They don't want you to be near them. They're afraid of you. Babies cry when you arrive in the room. You are as gorgeous as anything. But in the realm of the spirit, they've metamorphosized you. You now look like something out of Dracula or some of those Halloween monsters. Then there's a bloodline curse. This is the curse going from generation to generation. Everybody born into that family is infected. It's like, you know, like a virus. Imagine somebody has HIV and is passing it on and on and on. And the effects of that thing will mean that you know, you're you not what you're supposed to be. You're growing into something different than what God wanted. Or during certain periods of time, they press a button. For some people, it's like on their birthday month or, you know, there's a month in the year where that month is as difficult as anything. You work, work, work. When you get to that month, you overspend, overspend. The car breaks down. The children are sick, blah, blah, blah. All sorts happen because they've programmed certain periods to be periods of stress. Then there is a death curse where they want to kill the person. When there's a death curse, the person will get a diagnosis. Oh, they have cancer. Oh, they have this. But really, it's a death curse. Oh, they had a heart attack and it's a death curse. I'm not saying people don't die of natural causes, but they are also something like death curse. Then there's also a banishment curse. These people 
cannot go into certain places. In fact, you can even be banished from promotions where they hex and say, this person can never reach this effort, this place. They can never reach this office. They can never be promoted. So they are unable to reach that place. If they try to get their pain will come. All hell will break loose until they go back because they've been banished. So they try to start a business. All hell will break loose until they leave the business alone. Do you get it? Some people have an imprisonment curse. They've been put in a bottle. They've been put in a cage. You know, unless the curse is lifted, they are kept in a different dimension. Because in the spirit realm, there are different realms. There is like a land of milk and honey. But there's also a land of, of pain, a desert, where there are winds that cause people to just suffer. You know, it's just painful. So people can be imprisoned. Your, their destinies can be kept, kept there. So now that we've gone through it all, child of God, turn it to prayer. First of all, start by confessing Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Personalize it for you and your family. Um, and then begin to break all these curses. Don't say, oh, this is not in my family. You might not know we cover every base in the name of Jesus. Let's go ahead. Christ has purchased my freedom. And redeemed me and my bloodline and my family and my prayer partners and my parents from the curse of the law and its condemnation by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs crucified on a tree. Jesus hang on the tree and carried our curses. Jesus was crucified to carry the curses of our bloodlines, to carry the curses of everyone in this prayer meeting. Jesus carried the curses of everyone under the sound of my voice uh, in order that uh, in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might also come upon us the Gentiles uh, so we might receive uh, the promise the realization of the Holy Spirit through faith uh, this morning I received the promise of the Spirit through faith and I break every curse by the blood of Jesus uh, I am redeemed from the curse uh, whatever thing the curse is doing in my life uh, I break it in Jesus name the metamorphosis curse you are broken over my life my family my bloodlines my brothers my sisters their children the metamorphosis curse you are broken over all my prayer partners over everyone associated with me in the name of Jesus you will not change our physical appearance some people's appearance has changed that's why their spouses are running away that's why the husband has to find a side chica because the wife looks horrendous father we break that curse we break that curse we break it every metamorphosis curse upon our children children's children to bring this favor we break it in the name of Jesus when our children go to school the teachers will love them the lecturers will love them because they look glorious they look beautiful everybody loves them in the mighty name of Jesus Father, I break every bloodline curse, every curse uh, that has gone from generation to generation. What our grandmother suffered, our mother suffered, uh, and it tries to come to us. We say no. We say no. I break the curse. Uh, I break it. Uh, every bloodline curse uh, in all the bloodlines I'm connected to by birth, by marriage, uh, Lord, by covenant relationship. Uh, I break the curse. Uh, my children will not inherit curses. Uh, I refuse to live under a curse. I break the bloodline curse. Christ has redeemed me by the blood of Jesus. Curses, curses, curses of sickness, curses of diseases, hypertension, strokes, cardiac events, diabetes. We break you. We break you. Eye problems. We break you. Bloodline curses in the name of Jesus. Ah, diseases. Of the reproductive systems, ah, legadosia, fibroids, oh, whatever, barrenness, we, we break the curse, we break the curse. In the name of Jesus, uh, any curses on finances, uh, ah, Lord, curses on our businesses, uh, we break it. Uh, any curses of poverty, we break them. Uh, any curses, oh God, uh, that are still in our increase, uh, we break them. Uh, every bloodline curse uh, of divorces uh, and adultery uh, and fornication, uh, we break them in the name of Jesus. Uh, any curses uh, that are causing marital pain uh, and sorrow, we break them. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, any curses. Uh, that are leading to disabilities uh, that are causing children to be born deformed uh, or disabled uh, we break the curse uh, in the name of Jesus Father every curse 
that is trying to change what you blessed us with. Lord, we break it in Jesus' name. Father, we break every death curse. Whoever is trying to kill any one of us, we break their curse in the name of Jesus. Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. We have life and life in abundance. We have Zoe. We break the death curse in the mighty name of Jesus. We cannot be killed. Rabasia. Anyone who has given us a time limit on earth, anyone who's given our children a time limit on earth, we break it. We say we will live long and declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. Any time limit on our children, on our babies, on our men and our women, we break it. We say we will live long. We will live long. Our spouses will live long. Nobody will die prematurely in the name of the Lord Jesus. I break the death curse. Some people in their families, they can't reach 40. Some people can't reach 50. Some people, they, they, they just die as teenagers. We say, no, we break the curse. We break the death curse. As parents, we will not bury any of our children in the name of Jesus. None of us will be widows or widowers. We will live long and declare the works of the Lord in the land of the living. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for life and life in abundance. Father, I break the banishment curse. Anyone who has banished us from our places, from our businesses, and they put a curse and said, you have to leave this place even though it belongs to you. Father, we break the banishment curse. We break it. Nobody will banish us from what belongs to us. In the name of Jesus. When they don't want us to get into a certain place, Lord, we break the banishment curse. In the name of Jesus. Every pain they are putting to stop us from Possessing our possessions. You are a liar, devil. You are a liar. I will enjoy my promotion. I will enjoy that place God has designed for me. I will enjoy that office God gave me. I will enjoy what God has blessed me with. We will never be banished in the name of the Lord Jesus. Our spouses, our children, our children's children. We will not be banished in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Anyone who has been banished, some people have been banished from their own marriage. From their own marriage, they've been chased away. Father God, we break that curse. We break that curse. You will possess your home. You will possess your home. You will possess your home. You cannot be banished from your own marriage. You cannot be banished from your own business. You cannot be banished from your promotion in the name of Jesus. Some people are supposed to be here now. But whenever they apply for a visa, it gets rejected. They are banished. They cannot travel abroad. Father, we break that banishment curse. Anyone who says uh, you can't go to England, you can't go, you can't go. Father, we break that curse on our children, our children's children, our spouses, our brothers, our sisters, uh, our relatives, uh, our prayer partners, uh, anyone being banished uh, from the nations where they are supposed to go. Father, we break the curse. They have admission to the university. They are unable to travel because somebody banished them. Father, we break the banishment curse in the name of Jesus. Father, any imprisonment curse, anyone who's been put in a cage, in a spiritual prison, in a bottle, Lord, to be, to be, to be tormented until the day they die. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I break the curse. I break the curse. The chains are broken. For by the authority in the name of Jesus, every chain must be broken. We escape. We escape. We escape. We escape. Every spiritual prison, wherever people are being contained, they are not being allowed to move forward. We break it Lord uh, over our spouses our children our children's children our parents our grandparents our brothers our sisters our nieces our nephews our prayer partners Lord you said in Isaiah 61 the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed and commissioned me to bring good news to the poor he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted uh, and to proclaim release 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 and the opening of the prison door. Lord, we open the prison door. Every confinement, every condemnation, every reproach, every curse be broken. Let the prison door be opened. In the name of Jesus, I speak freedom to every prisoner. You are free. You are free to become what God said you will be. In the name of Jesus. 
Lord, whoever was sent to a different realm and arrested there, sometimes it's through witchcraft, through incantations, through summonings. Father God, we break it. We break it. We break them loose. Whoever is imprisoned under the water, whoever is imprisoned, our Lord, under the earth, whoever is imprisoned on evil realms and evil dimensions, I open the prison and I take them back. By the power in the name of Jesus, we open the door. None of us will remain in any prison. I break the bottle where they are containing you, where they put your name inside the bottle, we break it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Brethren, sorry for our time. If you just give us five minutes more to finish, sorry for our time. You know, I had a dream early this morning. In this dream, it's like I saw this girl, very pretty, very, very pretty girl. And this girl, um, she, 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 she sat next to me and she was telling me about her life. And in the dream, I saw Auntie Chichi. She was with me. So Auntie Chichi sat a little like in the seat behind me and the girl, but leaned forward. So she's listening. And the girl said to me, um, I have slept with 100 men and I've not stopped. She said, I'm not saying 100 like a long time ago, like it's taken a long time. She says, I've slept with 100 men and it's very recent. She said, um, I, I had an abortion um, just the other week. And then this month, uh, I've had a miscarriage. Uh, this is not my first miscarriage. It's not my first abortion. I don't have kids, but I've been pregnant quite a few times. And, um, you know, she was telling us this story. And I felt so compassion, you know, such compassion for her. And I knew that she's not doing it by her own will. She's a prisoner. She's in a prison where in that prison, she just has to fornicate. In that prison, she just has to be loose. She has to sleep around because she's been recruited into an assignment. And she cannot come out of that assignment unless she experiences deliverance. And in that dream, I remember Auntie Chi um, hugged her and kissed her and said, you know what? We love you. We love you. So we were talking to her to try and help her. And when I woke up, I knew that there are some girls as we are speaking right now. Some of them are in Christian families. The parents don't know that they are sleeping around. They are slaves. It, it's not that they are wanting to be like that. On Monday, Monday just gone, I was invited to a school in Manchester somewhere, a high school, to go and teach a class of 14-year-olds. As I was teaching, my eye could not leave a certain girl in the class. Child of God, I kept hearing, this child is being sexually abused. She's exploited. She's being trafficked. This child had so much makeup on her face, she looked older than me. Her skirt was up to here. You could see her knickers. And even before I started the lesson, as I walked into class, she had her makeup um, box with her and was topping up the makeup. That was already too much. She was topping it up in class. Tell me what time she's going to hear anything they are teaching. And she's a slave. People will look at her and say, oh, she's, she's choosing that behavior. But she's not. Some people are in, in, a, in a prison. That prison demands that they have to sleep around. That prison demands that they cannot be married. That prison is demanding all sorts of things. It's put them in prison. I want us to pray for that girl, that woman, that young man. It's not just girls. Some young men are in prisons of promiscuity. They don't know why they are just sleeping around or drinking and smoking or taking drugs. They are just in a prison. Somebody has caged them. And in that prison, they have to keep working against themselves. It's a type of self-harming behavior. But it's because they're in a prison. We want to break the prison. Isaiah 61. Let's use Isaiah 61 and say the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Talk about yourself. Say the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to those that are bound. This morning, Father God, we lose the captives. We lose the captives. Every prisoner, even in our own families, even if it is you in the prison, we lose you. We lose our spouses. Anyone in a prison that wants them to keep sleeping around uh, prison of promiscuity they've been arrested by marine spirits they are in a cage under the water and they are using them so that any man they sleep with they steal their glory any man they sleep with they steal their glory but them too don't have the glory the glory is being kept in the kingdom of darkness uh, father we are pleading the blood uh, break the spells uh, break the spells uh, break the spells uh, lose the prisoners this morning some people are in prisons of heartbreak that day they were heartbroken from that day up to now they become an agent of darkness father we are praying break the prison doors loose them lord let them experience the love of jesus the love of christ in the name of the lord jesus loose them loose them loose them lord loose them lord loose them 
Especially those who are in the bondage to marine demons. Lord, who are sleeping around, they can't control themselves. We are praying, loose them. Every form of prison, Abba Father. Loose your children. Loose them. Loose them, Lord. Hallelujah. Loose them from this curse. In the name of Jesus, the God. Every cage that is holding people, refusing them to serve God in spirit and in truth. Father God, I break these cages. I break them in the name of Jesus. Loose them, oh God. Loose them. Satan, loose them and let them go. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. You, you know, God will help us and keep giving us revelation because none of us are witches and wizards. So sometimes we underestimate the things they are doing because as a child of God, you are so pure. You don't know um, some of the stuff they are doing, but the Lord will keep giving us revelation in Jesus name. We'll stop here then and then we'll continue by God's grace.